It was the day after the day after tomorrow, and the flat block loomed over St. Hag's Catholic Girls' School and Big Saucy Joe's Strip Club, the foremost employer of school leavers from St. Hag's. Nobody could have begun to imagine that from inside these flats, the end of the world as we know it was about to happen. Inside, things carried on as normal. The muggers were mugging. Oof, okay kids, you can have your pocket money early. Jesus. The junkies were junking. The prostitutes were waiting for business. And in a quiet corner of Cat Stink Towers lives our wrinkly protagonists. In flat 10 lives old Albert. Hello, son. In flat 11 lives old Ethel. Hello, Chuck. In flat 12 lives John. Turn, chunk. Flat 13 belongs to old Winston. Hello there, kids. Flat 40 inhabitates Annie and Frank Matthews, an eccentric couple who were moderately well off. Annie was often sought after by the other elderly residents, as she had the uncanny ability to accurately predict the future through the tears left in her cat's litter box. People knew Frank as a handy DIY man, but were baffled when they heard odd workshop noises emanating from the flat at all hours. But everybody was too polite to ever bring it up. And so, by the by, the elderly folks lived together harmoniously regularly getting together to compare aches and ailments and how badly behaved those bloody kids are. All of them unaware that the incontinent old man of fate was about to urinate in their direction. Oh, and I get terrible rancid gas every time I eat cheese. You want to get yourself down to chemist's love? A packet of Sparks Brothers rancid cheesy gas removal pills? That'll do the trick for you. Mind you, I won't even go near the chemists now, not because of them bloody kids hanging around. I've had a boil on me bum for about three weeks. I need a packet of school stangs, boil on your bum removal pills. But I can't go there because I'm so frightened of them kids. Oh, that's right. I can't even go to the shops without a gang of 20 of them laughing and dancing around me. I lived through a world war, but it was never as bad as this. A lot of them need a good hiding and to be given the draft. Why, if I was 40 years younger? Oh, the children speak a different language these days. You can't understand them. And that music they listen to. Well, it's not even music, is it? Here, it's on television now. Watch this. Yo, man, the grease fries chunked up me lily pad fungus arm. You know what I'm saying, kids? Thanks, Hen. You debuted at number two, but now it's time for the number one banging tune. That's right, it's time to lock Granny in the cupboard and anyone over 25 out of the house, because for the eight week running, it's DJ Buchanan with Cat Blamage. I'm rolling on a better tune than that after a hard night's drinking at the Toad and Flag. Kids these days just don't understand what decent music is. What about your Bach, your Louis Armstrong, or your Led Zeppelin, or your Kajagoogoo? All leaders in their day, but these kids wouldn't even know talent if it bit them on the arse. And so the afternoon continued, with tea and cakes provided. So there was plenty more complaining, many suggestions made on writing the world, and just general bitching about how things were better in the olden days. And a good time was had by all. But... Whilst the old folks were having a right old knees up, the postman was delivering letters to the whole flat block. Letters which spelt the end of a way of life for the elderly, and ultimately, the whole world. Dear residents, first of all, I would like to say thanks very much for renting your current flat. Having you here has been a joy untold. That's why it is so sad for me to have to tell you. It's time to slow your bloody walk. I've just sold the flat block to a bunch of Chinese businessmen so they can build a brand new giant rotating noodle factory. Since their offer was more than any of you could afford to pay me, even if everyone in the building would have each offer me the rent payments until they were a hundred, I've taken the money and run. Demolition will take place in the next two days, so you've got to find our new places to live. Otherwise you're out on the streets like common trolls. <laughs> anyway, the way you junkies and prodigies treated the place, you'd have been out on your ears soon anyway. Lots of love from Barbados, Jack Pinchley, landlord. Pierce, none of you can have your deposits back, so go swivel. 
Well, what are to do? Catstink estate about to be demolished and the elderly with nowhere else to go. In desperation, they all hurried around to Annie and Frank's place to discuss a plan of action. They can't do this. I signed the lease, the legally binding contract. He can't just throw us out and knock the place down. Actually, he can. It was in the small, small, small print. I only noticed it because I left my copy under my heavy-duty microscope one night. Come on, Annie girl. Check through Tiddles' poop for us. Make sure it's all going to be okay. Oh, dear. Tiddles mustn't be very well today. It's all coming through cloudy. But I can see destruction and mayhem going on in the flats. Yet again she was right. All throughout the flat block, mayhem was the order of the day. And nothing brings out the vandalistic and nutjob tendencies of people more than a closing down flat. Well, I suppose there's nothing else for it but to book ourselves into the old folks' home. Or sleep in a cardboard box on the street. I... I can't believe it. Our memories, our lives, over with because of one man's greed. Is there no hope left for the elderly in this life? Maybe there is a way to save our homes. Frank, what about bringing Operation Wrinkly Fist forward? Do you think that's wise? Are we ready? Is this even the right time? Frank, what other opportunity will we get to use this? If it works, we get to keep our home and get a better deal for the elderly everywhere. Come on, we have the equipment and nothing else to lose. Let's strike now! Why are you jibber jabbering about? We're all about to be made harmless, and all you can talk about is wrinkly fists and operations. Ethel's right. We've got to find a solution. It's like the pair of you are talking double touch. I've got something to show you all. Something that, should you decide to use, will ensure you keep your homes and be treated with a little bit more respect. All I ask is that you trust us and step away from the bookcase. Annie and I haven't been entirely honest with you. We did once own a hotel, but it was a front for an undercover operation to smash a threat to world peace involving a Nazi ring, a black magic ceremony, and a jam sandwich. We both worked for a secret undercover branch of the Ministry of Defense. That's where we met. I was quite the inventor. Annie was the best psychic investigator there was. Once we retired, we saw the way Britain was. Against the elderly. Together, we worked on a plan, calling it Operation Wrinkly Fist. We built weapons to keep us personal ammunition, plus one or two inventions that Frank kept back from the Ministry of Defense drawing board. The question now is, do you believe us, and are you ready to fight for your rights? I've been a soldier once before in my life. I fought for this country. Now, I'm going to have to become a soldier again to fight for my home. There's still things as an old man I've not yet done. I've never even uttered the immortal lines like, Hey! I'll burst that ball in a minute! Or the ever classic, I know you're dead! Okay, count me in. I'm not going to lie to you and say that this will be easy. We are declaring war on society and youth after all. But there will be casualties, and lives will be lost. This will be ugly, but what war isn't? So I ask you all now, are you ready to make a stand? To make the sacrifice? To inspire the elder generation to take arms against their young oppressors? If there's a chance worth taking, I'll take it. Okay, count me in. I suppose I've got nothing else to lose. Yeah, me too. Can I just change my dress now before we go? And so the old folk discussed their plan. Wipe out the scum in the flat block, then hold the flat to siege, appear on television, and Bob's your uncle resulting publicity saves their way of life. Well, I didn't say it was subtle. And so, Annie and Frank took them through the weapons, including wheel-mounted electric bunion shoes. Eliminates walking by wheeling you to your destination. Also with a comfy insole. Arm-mounted blaster cannon. Just the kind of weapon I wanted when I were a lad. Blasts anything to kingdom come. DNA grenades. Once thrown and detonated, they re-alter the DNA of anything organic within their blast radius. Carry blasters, with both stun and kill settings. And so, after a little while, and a change of dress for Ethel... Mm, doesn't that look lovely? The old folks were tooled up and 
left Crew 14, or HQ as it was now known, and went to meet their destiny. What do you want? Now, this is my party and my music. I'm gonna have it on as loud as I want. Kick his head in, Jared! Yeah, clear off, or I will kick your head in. Oh dear, it seems I've got no choice now. And with that, the takeover of Catstink Towers began. The old folk quickly eliminated those bad eggs in the flat. The cooperative ones were held in the basement. However, the takeover did not go unnoticed, and the police were called in desperation by a crack addict before he was exterminated. Uh, yeah, uh, a riot, you say? Uh, old folk running around with guns? Cats think Um, uh, gun at your head now. Hello? Hello? Call for receiving a stress call at Cats think Sounds like a riot in progress. I'm proceeding now. I've just been in touch with SWAT team. They will rendezvous in five minutes. Jenkins, don't you turn the bloody siren off. Excellent. By the way, haven't we passed that cow three times before now? Everybody take your places, they're here! Okay, time to show everyone what I'm made of. Alright, I'm gonna bust me some heads in this riot. <laughs> Guns go bang! Attention rioters, cease this action. Release the hostages and surrender. You are outnumbered. If you fail to comply, we'll raid the building and blow the shit out of you. And that's the story. The police never survived the explosion. Most mutated into socks or hen lizards or mutant monkeys. After the riot in Catstink Towers, other elderly people followed suit. First tens, then twenties. Then it became global. In China, in America, and in Germany. Elderly everywhere, rising up in gangs to suppress the young and mould them to their way of thinking. Pockets of rebellion tried to quash the uprising, but, like the authorities, these soon failed. Now it's time for- Come on, hurry up and finish this film. It has to be ready to be shown in the re-education camps from Monday onwards. Get your finger out, or I'll give you another taste of the cane. Oh, what a glorious time. The future looks bright. The future is wrinkled. Thank <laughs> you.